congratulations, first of all, on all the nominations. You got more nominations than any movie. That's exciting, yes, right? Yes, exciting. Yeah. Did you wake up early? Nominations came out yesterday. Did you get up early to see <laughs> if, what was going to happen? Were you ready for it? Well, I, I've been traveling a lot, so I said to my manager, you call me when everything happens, and I'm, you know, we'll see. Right. It's not very glamorous. I sleep with a CPAP machine. <laughs> Oh, one of those big. <laughs> oh, really? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I take very off my glasses. Very sexy. Very yeah, sexy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I take off my glasses to increase the effect. I see. <laughs> so I'm, I'm asleep and I go, eh, eh. And I grab the, can't find my glasses. I have the CPAP machine like Darth Vader. <laughs> and I, and I, I can't find, and I said, hey, if it's important, he'll call again. He calls again. I'm looking and I grab the, the cell phone and I put it right next to my eye. <laughs> and I read, nominated for this. I go, that's great. Nominated. It took four nominations for me to find the glasses. <laughs> so it's good that it was seven. When you get nominated for all these Golden Globes, is there, like, in Mexico, your, your homeland, is there a celebration? Are they proud of you? Do they... Is it big news there? It is. I mean, I'm hoping I get to be a piñata. <laughs> uh, this Christmas, you know? Is that an honor to be a piñata? Because they're making a lot of piñatas of Donald Trump, and it doesn't seem like well, they're it, honoring him. It depends on what the piñata is full of. I see. What <laughs> would a Guillermo del Toro... Candy. Candy. Candy, OK. The best, the best kind. <laughs> this is... Uh, I love the movie, by the way. I was watching... I saw the movie last night, and I, after watching it, I thought, this is not just a good movie, it's a classic. It's like a, um, it, and I know the audience hasn't seen the movie before, but explain what the plot is, because the plot really on paper sounds ridiculous. It is, yes. it is insanely simple and insane. Yes. It's, it's a fairy tale for troubled times, and it's an adult fairy tale, and it's about, uh, it's 62, and there is a night shift in a super secret government facility, and this mute woman, cleaning lady, discovers that there is a creature they keep there. And every night, she takes her lunch break and has a little lunch next to the creature, and they form a bond. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, moving love story. It really is. And you've got two... Your two main characters don't speak, yeah. which is a huge challenge. It is. And the, the creature itself is kind of grotesque, obviously, but also there's, a, like, a beauty to it. Did you, did you yeah. create the creature? It took three not... years. You know, we, need, we knew we were creating uh, an elemental river god, so it needed to be beautiful. And uh, it took two years to design, one year to execute. And I must say, uh, it's perhaps one of the most beautiful creatures ever committed to film. How... I, I agree with you. How... When did you think of this idea for, for this movie? Was it a recent thing? <laughs> no, no. It started when I was six. And on every, every Sunday, we would go to church and then watch movies. And at six, I was watching Creature from the Black Lagoon uh, on TV. There is a similarity between the yeah, creature and the... the creature the... swims underneath Julie Adams, and I just thought, what a great love story. I, I was six. I thought, I'm sure it's going to end well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the creature's going to come out well. But it's a home invasion movie. <laughs> they killed the creature at the end of the movie. Yeah, right, because yeah. it's a creature. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. I said, I'm going to correct that. It took 46 years, but I corrected it. And you did. And are you, I would assume you're happy with the way it came out. How do you compare it to your other movies, this movie? It's, uh, it's the movie I like the most that I've ever made. I think it's the best movie. Uh, it was a movie that was really difficult to make. And we opened in the Venice Film Festival, first time we show it. And it won the Golden Lion, and it was just... Uh, I, I, I cried, genuinely cried, like, like Miss Universe. Is know? there any...? <laughs> Except with different measurements. Is there a...? 80, 80, 80. <laughs> Is there a better feeling professionally than making a movie and showing it to a group of people and then seeing that they enjoy it? Yes. It's completely... It's, you start feeling it from minute one. You know, the movie starts and you feel the audience is with it or without, and rarely does it change. They're either it, with you or they're or not. They're not. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know it the first showing. You basically know the entire life of the movie the first time you show it. And you really can't get that sense from testing it, can you? You can to a degree, but, you know, a test audience uh, uh, is not going there uh, in any context. They didn't see a poster. They don't know what it's about. Right. So it can be weird. But in a, in the first time you really know, 
is what an audience. Michael Shannon is uh, is the bad guy in the movie, and he is fantastic. And, yeah. In fact, all the act. I don't. I don't even want to single him out specifically because all the acting is. Sally great. Hawkins is. Phenomenal. Sally Hawkins is wonderful. You have a, and I, I don't think I'm ruining this because I think this is something that's out there. You have a love scene between a human woman yeah. and a, a, a river god. Yes, yeah. yes. Were you worried when you shot that that? It would be completely ridiculous because I Always. mean, Always. yeah, every day. But but, <laughs> but you know, failure and success live next door to each other, and they have no numbers at the door. <laughs> they just knock. The thing, the thing that is the most sublime, is the thing that can be the most ridiculous. Yeah. Always. Oh. Huh. So you're risking it. So you really had no idea whether it was working well, or not. You, you try to bring. I mean, I've been doing this for 25 years. Right. You bring your craft. It's a little bit like with humor. You know, the, 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 the joke or the tragedy exists side to side. And you bring your, your craft and you bring your experience and you think, what am I going to do to ensure that it's gorgeous, beautiful, poetic, magical? And then sometimes you're right, sometimes you're not. You, did the, like, the crew, were they on board with it or were yeah. they looking at this no, no, sea no. monster and no, it, river it, it, monster? No, I tell you, the, it's, we spent more time shooting three shots of that and we shot it uh, in a beautiful, and there's no water in those scenes. Really? I know that it's a technique called dry for wet, huh. in which you fill the stage with smoke, and you use fans and you show slow motion, shoot slow motion, so it looks like they're underwater. And they're it didn't look like they were underwater. Yeah, only one scene is underwater, but I tell you the scene, <laughs> if you think this is weird, let me describe, there's a musical number. <laughs> there's a musical number, and that, that was weird because we have an orchestra of 50 musicians with instruments in the tuxedos, and in comes an amphibian man and, and a woman in a, in a glowing dress. And I turn and I say, I bet this is the weirdest gag you've ever been booked. Yeah, really? <laughs> the band was like, when did we get high? This is... <laughs> well, it's a beautiful movie, and I encourage everyone to go see it. It's called The Shape of Water. It is in theaters now. Guillermo del Toro, everybody. Thank you, Guillermo. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you like that, click the subscribe button below and good things will happen forever.